Surprise! That's what Robert Rodriguez is going to say on <laughs> December 29th. Nine days from today, we are less than 10 days away from the Book of Boba Fett. Crazy. Amazing that a new live action Star Wars is going to be on our TVs, on our tablets, wherever you're watching your Disney Plus. Uh, but it's it's incredible that we're nine days away from brand new Star Wars. Uh, and uh, we're here to talk about it. So welcome everybody to the Resistance Broadcast. I'm John. Thank you for joining us on our uh, news show where we give our takes on the latest news. Uh, we don't necessarily report the news to you. You go to Star Wars News Net for all that stuff. Um, but with me as always is James and Lacey. Um, so I'm wearing my Make Solo 2 Happen shirt. Uh, still still uh, fighting the good fight and, and rooting for it and, and all that stuff. But it looks like we may have taken a little punch to the gut, possibly. <laughs> um, but... You know, considering the fact that there is still a 10-year gap between Solo and A New Hope, um, they did put out a release that there is a new comic, the first ever Han and Chewie series uh, from Marvel that's going to take place uh, a few years before A New Hope. Um, mm -hmm. So, and what's interesting is they appear to be using, aside from that weird cover where it looks like it's like Tom Berenger or somebody. Or something yeah, something. I was going to say it doesn't look like Harrison or Alden, really. Yeah, but most of the artwork that they showed looks clearly like it's the Harrison Ford variant of right. Han Solo. It looks like um, it looks like uh, <laughs> it looks like Back to the Future when it was still uh, whatever is it? You know, Eric Stoltz. Stoltz. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like they have like one. It's like the Revenge of the Jedi <laughs> poster. It's yeah. like when the other yeah. guy was cast, and they had to go back yeah. and shoot it with Harrison. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, they they have this comic coming out and. Um, uh, I'm always excited for more Han and Chewie, but uh, I still think, you know, with a seven year gap still there between that comic and Solo, like we've mm -hmm. seen there's smaller gaps in the entire original trilogy. It only takes place over the course of five years. So, um, you know, maybe people think that ah, this might put the nail in the coffin for, for more Solo. I don't think so yet. And especially because they if they had used the Alden version for the artwork, I would have been like, oh, maybe. I don't know. But the fact that they stuck it to Han they're like no we're tying this more to a new hope so I don't know what do you guys think about that are you are you um I don't know that I'll, I'll read it because I never get it like something with me in the comics I'm like I don't know where to buy it I don't know where to get it and they come and go and I, I read the reviews from Kyle and the crew on on the site and that sort of thing but um what, what, you, what were you guys first reaction to this and uh also were you surprised that it's the first Han and Chewie comic series because I was like really that's wild James, you want to go first? Um, yeah, I thought it was kind of weird that they were leading with that. It's the first Han and, and Chewie, like, but I think that's only by title. You know what I mean? I guess. I don't know. Well, I think they mean it's just like the first ever series where Han and Chewie are the the leads of the, the comic. The forefront, yeah. yeah. We did the Han Solo comic um, a while back, but I'm trying to even remember if Chewbacca was in it. So, I mean, that kind of puts that there but anyway getting yeah. getting to the point of the the thing like here here's the thing with the comics is I don't, I don't think this is a big um push uh towards you know make solo to not happening or that that story that movie that tv show whatever it is um and the reason i think that is is because you can look at uh a new hope and then you can look at empire strikes back and they've filled in tons of stories with the ongoing star wars comic that's even been rebooted right. rebooted um, and they've crossed over uh, with Dr. Afra and all sorts of other things. Those characters have gotten in so many adventures in between those things that you could consider like the main arc that um, this and, and that's one of the reasons to me, like I've always said that Solo is the, the Star Wars movie we want is because these guys are regularly getting into trouble with these people and they got to figure it out and get out of it. And, you know, they say in force awakens, there's no one left in the galaxy for you to swindle, meaning they've swindled so many people right. that <laughs> this particular story, Han Solo and Chewbacca could literally be about anything. Yeah, sure. They're including job of the hut, but what does that matter? I mean, they have literally like 
uh, 10 years or, or so, you know, maybe even more to, to play with, or what, I don't know what it is exactly, but uh, timeline wise, but they have a long time there that they were uh, doing <clears throat> so much stuff. Like, I don't feel yeah. this is just another way for them to be like, and they also did these things. Here's some fun for you. Side note, you know, yeah. um, I don't think this is any sort of like the definitive Han Solo story, you know, like <laughs> Solo is, is his origin. And we just want to see more of those tales with those characters around that time, kind of involving a loose arc, you know, with, with that potential thread. Um, but I, I don't, I don't think that even the Solo movies are, are necessarily supposed to be the definitive story because it, he, he's a character that just has so many stories. It's endless. They could tell Han Solo stories, for the next hundred years and we'd probably buy it because yeah. we're like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> One day he ran into this guy and had an issue, right, you right. know, whatever. Yeah. So Lacey, what do you think? What was your first reaction when you saw that? And then what's your, what's your, what are your thoughts? So naturally we got tagged in this a bunch of times. So yeah. I was just like, <laughs> we, yeah, yeah. what does this mean? You know, you have that kind of like, Ugh. um, but I, I, I think that James made some good points and, and I agree with them that, uh, Ultimately, I don't think it hurts anything because there is so much mm -hmm. uh, time and hijinks that Chewie and Han can get into. I think also there's the opportunity that it, if they do do a solo series and movie or movie, fingers crossed, uh, they could reference this comic series in that, which then creates that synergy that Disney loves where you're connecting it to this book and this comic and whatever and drawing you into the different types of media that they put out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was a little disappointed reading the article about like how he, you know, interacts with Jabba, which makes sense. I get it. He works for Jabba at this time, but I was kind of just like hoping that that first introduction with Han and and Jabba would have been on screen with a Jabba puppet. <laughs> so, well, that, that could still have we happen. ever seen I know, anything I'm just with saying... Han and Jabba where they were like buddies? Oh, I guess so. Yeah, a New Hope. The a New Hope, but scene. I wouldn't even say that they're buddies. But I know what you mean, like Han working. Mabuki relationship yeah, yeah like in return of the jedi that's the first time you ever see jabba and they are not cool with each other uh, yeah so, uh, definitely not a new hope you're right though is is the one yeah um yeah. but yeah i know that's not obviously when they first meet so it's a little mm -hmm. different but it's just kind of like in the back of your mind you're kind of just like okay come on like you care enough to make a comic about this you care enough to write these stories and get into this again mm -hmm. just go a little bit further <laughs> like connect it to the stuff you've already done let's go uh, yeah, fans want it. I don't think anyone ever thought, at least I didn't, that use like the Alden version of Han was ever going to be paired right up to right. A New Hope because right. you need like you know the the age change and the look change sort of thing. Just like with you know Obi Wan, they're not going to go and show us Ewan's Obi Wan, uh, you know, going to save Luke from the the Tusken Raiders. Like they, right. they're not gonna, there's, they're always gonna leave that gap there. So it's like, yeah, he aged a little more, and he and he looked like a different guy. Um, mm -hmm. But so, yeah, I'm not ruling it out. I mean, it it does take a little chunk away, but I, you know, they still have that seven year gap there. And like James said, like they put five billion comics out in the one year that takes place between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. So it's true. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, I I still have some feeling in my heart that uh, we will see Alden Ehrenreich again on screen with that DL44. So, um, but we have, I mean, we just want to touch on that at the top. So I know a lot of people are anytime, like Lacey said, anytime a solo thing comes out, they, they, they tag us. So that way, I think that's really cool. Um, but let us know what your, your thoughts are on that as well out there. Uh, in TRB land, I just made that up. Um, but before we get into the resistance report, we do have a lot of uh, stories that we're going to cover about the book of Boba Fett. James is uh, rifling through the newspapers now to get all the clippings. But before we do that, uh, if you're on Twitter, maybe you saw, but for everyone who's listening to us or watching, um, we are bringing back the Mando fan show on December 29th. You probably knew we were going to do some sort of show after, uh, the book of Boba Fett, but we're sticking with the Mando fan show. So I guess it's season three of the Mando fan show. Boba but, Fett's uh, we, Mandalorian. Yeah. Yeah. The Din Djarin, uh, uh, vouched for him. Right. So, and, uh, he said, um, you know, I think they they refer to Django as a foundling or something of that nature of the Mandalorian. So, absolutely. So, we're bringing back the Mando fan show. We have a new logo that James put together and a very cool video teaser 
uh, including a slowed down version of Slave One that some people already <laughs> pointed out, right, James? Well, nobody knew what it was, and I, I uh, was very candid in our chat that I said, well, here's what I was doing and why I created the sounds that I created. So. That's cool, though. Um, so we hope very everyone's cool. excited for that. We're probably going to bring back another Mando Code giveaway contest. Uh, and we'll reveal more details as we get closer. We are obviously nine days away. So just keep your eye out on our social media accounts or, you know, future uh, episodes and stuff like that. But we'll we'll keep you up to date. But just know that the day uh, the Book of Boba Fett comes out, that night, um, which will specify a time soon, but usually around TRB time, if you, if you catch our drift, um, we'll be going live and doing the Mando Fan Show. So we hope you join us. Bring a friend and uh get in the live chat it's gonna be a really good time so we look forward to bringing that back and uh, we'll see you soon there but it's it's trb time it's it's our podcast time now so we're gonna send it over to james to see what's going on in star wars news it's the resistance Wow, lots of stuff going on this week about the book of Boba Fett. And that's to be expected, right? Because we're only a few days away. Um, it's right around the corner and the marketing has gone, pew, right? Everybody's doing their interviews with magazines. Uh, they're not on Jimmy Fallon, but they're on Jimmy Fallon. You know what I mean? Uh, everybody's, <laughs> do, everybody's doing that. Uh, we're getting new TV spots, all of it. Um, so I think the thing here is we, we got a couple things that we want to touch on, and that involves a uh, very specific Hollywood Reporter article. Uh, we want to talk about a new TV spot that came out because um, it kind of... Uh, flip the script a little bit on what we've been m marketed so far about this show. And then uh, we got another article from TV Insider, but I want to go back to that Hollywood Reporter article because it is chocked full of stuff, uh, all sorts of quotes from everybody involved in this project. Very cool. Um, I'm going to start with you, John, on this because uh, we just there, there's so much to touch on. Um, yeah. uh, every every statement by so many different people. Um, I feel we'll just move through it as we're going along. Um, what were your initial thoughts on uh, reading the article? And you know, were there any specific quotes from anybody that stuck out to you? Yeah, it, this is a loaded article. Mm -hmm. um, Miguel did a great job on Star Wars News that are breaking it all down to make it like, all right, this, 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 this. Um, but yeah, the Hollywood Reporter brought the juice here. And there's a <laughs> lot of really good stuff here. And if you really take a close look at this stuff, one of the things that actually jumped out to me is more evidence of the autonomy and 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 creative license and control that Disney affords Lucasfilm, but also affords the people creating this stuff. John Favreau being the main one, because he said, do not announce this series at your investors day. That's a big deal. <laughs> Boba Fett's a very popular character. And for Disney to be like, all right, we won't announce it on our investors day. That's a like a huge thing. So uh, Chio, cheers to Disney for allowing that surprise to be at the end of the Mandalorian season two. And then on top John's of that, John's been calling a lot of those, uh, shots with the baby yoda don't tell anybody about baby yoda don't yes. do this don't do that like yes. i'm surprised not that the he doesn't deserve that kind of power i'm yeah. just saying yeah. it's surprising that nobody's been like no right and then the fact that well you should see they, what he's trying to pitch that they say no to <laughs> yeah that's what i'm curious yeah, right. about right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's like 20 movies and it's all me directing and There's they're like three mm. baby yodas <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah there's a whole litter <laughs> And every um, one of them has but, 30 arms. <laughs> yeah. And then George comes in and they're like, what? Yeah, yeah. What is what, happening? What? No. no. They're like, no. Back no. it off. No, he's not. He's yeah. like, I only ever wanted uh, just the announcement on Investor's Day. <laughs> yeah. That's all, I ever, <laughs> that's all I really wanted. But the the other part is that, you know, Robert Rodriguez and nobody knew that they were going to pop this thing in at the end, sort of Marvel style at the end of uh, The Mandalorian Season mm -hmm. 2. Um, so just knowing again that that's sort of like one of those like we're keeping it close to the vest even from people inside the inner circle um, pretty wild and also the fact that it was John Favreau who pitched the series after seeing Robert Rodriguez do work on that Boba Fett chapter of the Mandalorian so 
Which he got a no to begin with, didn't he? Didn't he pitch Boba and that's what turned into The Mandalorian? Well, only because they were working on the film at the time. They were still workshopping the the Boba Fett movie. Right, with the Josh Trank thing, right? That's what it was. Yeah, so if you look at the timeline of when The Mandalorian Season 2 was filming, you know, fall of 2019... Uh, right. And then yeah, yeah. Fall 2019. You're better than into I spring, am at this. Into spring of 2020, <laughs> you figure midway through that they probably filmed that episode. Who knows if they go in you know, in in order or not? I'm not really sure on that. But you could probably figure somewhere it out that social because people were taking pictures. Yeah. So so somewhere in that time frame they did that episode and then he pitched it. So it wasn't a lot of time before they pitched this idea and greenlit it behind the scenes and you know without much public fanfare or leaks or anything and Mm -hmm. then got it turned around just that very next december with a clip that they clearly shot during season two of the mandalorian and and told them like you can't announce this like that whole thing is mind-blowing to me and awesome proof that yeah disney is you know the big corporate boss but they do again more proof that they do let the creators and the studio itself lucasfilm run its own shop and and do these things that are clearly taking chances in terms of investor money and stuff like Boba Fett's a very popular Star Wars character that probably would have been a good thing to put out on an investor's day and the fact that like we want to honor the creative reveal and the excitement for fans mm-hmm. that's a really cool thing um mm-hmm. and here come all sometimes, the comments you're a shell you're a shell oh my god yeah but, sometimes investors get that um that people think of them as like no, do anything that makes us money kind of thing. And you're yeah. looking at how right. Lucasfilm has kind of been handled over the past couple of years where, where everybody's like, I don't understand why you're not Marvel. I'm sure investors like big, big wigs at the top are also saying the same thing. Like, why can't you yeah. do that? And Disney's saying, we just, we're going to let Lucasfilm run Lucasfilm. You know, we're going to let yeah. them do it. Like it's their business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the other part about this main article and uh, before, I tossed the Lacey is the, you know, sometimes these series are like, yeah, the first two episodes are like stuff from the trailers mm-hmm. the, he said it's the first few minutes. So I called have that. Seen... I said it was from the first episode. So here I'll, I'll read and the that's quote fine, real quick. But, he says, we can't yeah, use the second half of the first episode because it gives away so much <laughs> things turn yeah. up. You don't expect, you see things you couldn't believe we got to do every episode has big surprises right so assuming let's say each episode is 40 minutes long and there's seven episodes that's 280 minutes what we've seen exists in the first 20 minutes of that 280 minutes um and they're already seeing things where you're seeing fennec kind of saying like you know fear is a given and stuff like that like boba fett's gonna go ham in this series and robert rodriguez is putting himself out there so confidently that if this is even mediocre, he's going to wear egg all over his face. So the fact that he keeps going out and not even saying like, like JJ did, like, I think people are going to be satisfied. Mm -hmm. People are going to be happy. He's like, yeah, people are going to go nuts. It is (laughs) amazing. It's we're going to over deliver. This is like the, the car salesman, but he's really telling the truth. And it has me hyped up like he's a hype machine. Mm-hmm. And I'm very excited about that. So uh, I'll leave it there for now. You know, we have a lot of other stuff to, to touch on about this, including the new TV spot and the relationships and stuff. But I want to bring you guys in in two to see what uh, your initial grabs were. Lacey, go, yeah, go I ahead. Mean, yeah. My kind of first thing that I, I noticed was when Robert Rodriguez was talking about how he was influenced by The Godfather because I feel like John's been talking about The Godfather oh. for like months now oh about how God. this show is like, oh, it's giving me a Godfather f- vibe. Well, that is completely accurate. Uh, and then I, it, it, coming off of that kind of sum up there with The Godfather, he does say that Boba Fett bites off more than he can chew. And like talking about the characters, he says that Fennec Shand is more from the streets and then Boba Fett has more of a military training. So they had kind of complement each other. But the idea that he then, like I said, says that Boba bites off more that he can chew is kind of interesting to me because in all the teasers that we've seen and moments of him in the Mandalorian that we've seen, he's very calm. He's very like calm, Mm -hmm. collected, reserved. Like even for that one, like where he's clearly beating the crap out of those people. He like, even there he's weirdly calm though. Like, he's, like, walking calmly. 
he Mm -hmm. he like shoots this ship out of the sky and then calmly walks back like i don't know about you guys if i just blew up a ship the last thing i'm doing is like turning around and slowly walking back to my friends on the other like a couple steps away but uh well, that's, that's the old, super- I've done this so many times mm-hmm. thing that it's... Yeah, you know. and it's the movie thing, you know, the explosion in the background. Yeah. But it's just very interesting because I think all of us feel that Boba Fett's going into the series of go- looking for revenge. He's going to be, you know, we're hoping he's very savage about things. Um, but from the descriptions that Robert Rodriguez gave, it seems that Fennec is more on that side of, like, very aggressive, not seeing it the way that Boba Fett wants to see it, where he's, like not gonna rule like Jabba and then he explains that she doesn't see it the same way she wants to do things separately so that kind of plays into what you said John either last week or the week before I believe it was last week when you said that you felt that there was going to be some conflict between them that might result ultimately in her death because and I don't know if that's the case but because they conflict in their views of how things should be done, which right. then plays into kind of the whole Godfather thing where, you know, if someone comes a little too hard, then they get burned type thing. Um, Gangster movies, it's always, we're family. We look out for each other. We're family. Like, it, it's not blood. It's mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. We're family. And then those they always turn on each other. Yeah. Eat each other. Um, The kind of video production film nerd in me geeked out in this interview and i'm sure james might mention this too is when he talks about meeting george lucas and george was like uh you should use digital cameras <laughs> and like so rob rodriguez that talking about the type yeah the type of tech he used for this show compared to film do you want me to read um, that quote too i got it right yeah here. go for it george said you should check out these digital cameras i'm using and showed me some of the green screen tricks and that's what got me into shooting digital he was a mentor at a stage where I went from doing films like From Dusk Till Dawn and Desperado to doing the pioneering all green screen filmed Sin City. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And then it goes into talking about him uh, doing Alita Battle Angel. Um, yeah, and that was how he got the job on The Mandalorian. I thought Lacey would like that, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. John uh, saw the movie Alita and how, you know, uh, the high-tech filmmaking that was involved there, and he said, we got to get this guy. So that was what brought him on. Um, not to take away from what you were saying, Lacey, but yeah, yeah go all, for that, it. all that tech stuff w- was pretty crazy. I uh, thought of I, you when I read it. I was like, I know I'm geeking out right now, so I know James is. <laughs> I actually <laughs> like this cameras. one, too, and I'm not, I'm not like a George Lucas elitist or anything like that, but... Sure. I, I always think it's interesting elitist when he's just involved, angel. even if he like shows up or something. <laughs> what was that? He said, said elitist, elitist battle, oh, battle angel. Elitist <laughs> battle angel. Yeah. Um, I wish I had but, a robot arm to punch John in the face. After well, that. what are you gonna do? <laughs> Rodriguez specifically mentions the first time he met George, um, mm-hmm. meaning there have been subsequent times. You know, it's like they they've grown and they're pretty well aware of each other. And then when asked in this article uh, if he discussed the book of Boba Fett with Lucas, he simply said, I can't tell you, which, dun, which dun, dun. I mean, you know, sometimes you answer questions and you give give the answer without giving the answer. That is a yes to me. That to me is it was a private conversation. And I don't have to share it with you. And I totally get that. Like keeping that close I took to your it chest. As, you'll find out when the behind the scenes stuff drops. Oh, eventually. you think? So, Oh, absolutely, yeah. Because I, I was kind of very... surprised they didn't feature him a lot in The Mandalorian, remember? Because we were kind of looking forward to those moments, and I think they only had like a couple shots. Well, he only went to the set one day or one something day, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, think I it's saw just that one of those I things... took it as he kept it to himself. Yeah, like George Lucas lives up in uh, Northern California, mm-hmm. and they filmed down in Southern California. Like, he probably did one visit. He's like, I'm down here because, you know, I'm checking in on the progress for the museum. Let me pop by. And Floney's like, please, Dad. I'm uh, George. Come on. Yes. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's do it. I, I just get a different vibe from the phrase, I can't tell you. I can't tell you means uh, you'll have to see. Yeah. You kind of wish you had the audio to hear it, to hear how he said it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which reminds me of Seinfeld, answers... which I've been watching lately, where he's like, which word did he emphasize? Right. Like, did you invite Jerry to the party? <laughs> if it, if it's not Why would something Jerry show up? <laughs> that's behind NDA, I feel it's a little right. bit more like he would have answered the question like, 
uh we we've we've been friends for a long time we've had the discussions before or like i you know i i called him up we had a chat we talked about the character a little bit um you know so it was nice to have that but the the phrase um i'm not allowed to say you know (laughs) it just feels like (laughs) it's like when you're in those senate hearings and they're like i'd like to plead the fifth exactly and they keep repeating that over and over i'm gonna plead the fifth or blah blah yeah it it, yeah i can't tell you to me says a lot about the phrase and it makes me think that he uh there's footage of him there's a photo there's a there's something that was recorded you know about this that you'll see Mm -hmm. later because then it falls under the it's not two friends having a conversation privately or something even if it was like a paid lunch, <laughs> you know, uh, well, yeah. I think there's something that falls into the category of we can't reveal this because we're going to reveal it later. Yeah. There's also another big reveal here that wasn't really a reveal, but it's like if you put two and two together. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if L- Lacey, you, you weren't done with your point, so I'll bring it up after you're done. But Oh, it's OK. I actually was just going to mention because uh, I kind of went through a couple different things that I liked, but like my really scrolling through the article i just realized my favorite quote which i didn't even mention because there was just like john said so much stuff in this article definitely yeah, go read it Star Wars said, it, dot com. Yeah. there's so much going on uh it's actually the part where they asked um rob rodriguez talking about working on book of boba fett and he said that you know what was it was a dream come true mm-hmm. and he said i can't even say this is a dream come true because i wouldn't have even thought to dream this um, that's really yeah. cool yeah, it's just the idea that we say this all the time, but it's so true. Having creators work on these properties and work on this, these shows and movies and comics and books and what have you, where they are diehard Star Wars fans and they have been for so long. And we knew this about Robert Rodriguez because not just only stuff he said in the past, but from The Mandalorian, when he went into his backyard and shot his whole episode using action figures, like the amount of love and passion that went into that little piece, which got him the job. But just talking about, you know, the thing I really loved that he said ultimately was that he made this for him. You know, he made what he would thought would be cool and what he really liked um and and how you can't go into it just seeing like well what are people going to say is wrong or right he's like yeah. no I, I did this did this for me and he likes having the freedom of saying like this is what i decided to and, do and also how he he likes respecting like we talked uh, you know we talked about this how mm-hmm. you got to be careful with this whole boba fett thing and like how how much you're going to stretch out and let us inside but because you have to think people just like i would say luke skywalker is probably the other one that people are super passionate about like sure. boba fett is right up there when... well people have been waiting for for more yeah. boba fett for so long and now like he he honors and respects and loves the mystery of boba fett and i think mm-hmm. he's going to to do a good job of trying to like sort of preserve that and maybe that's why he seems like stoic and what is boba fett thinking here because even though he has his mask off you still want to feel like you're getting that version of boba fett like I don't know what this guy's all about. Right. And I think they captured that. And I think that's really smart. But the one thing I was going to bring up that maybe slipped through the cracks a little bit is when he said, uh, if people love it, I'm sure they'd want to make more seasons. Boba Fett's definitely not dying then in the book of Boba Fett. I think that oh, is, is like... I didn't even pick up on that. You just ruined it for me. Well, he <laughs> said it. The showrunner. This isn't, you know, some leak thing. I like, know, it, I know. I'm just joking. Like, what... Like the story wrapped with Rodriguez saying a season two is not out of the realm of possibility. And he said, if people really love it. I'm sure they'd want to make more. Uh, you don't make <laughs> the book of Boba Fett without Boba Fett. As, 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 right. As you far don't as make, I understand uh, it. So, yeah, so this isn't going to be, a, this isn't a Logan th- situation for Boba Fett where they bring him back and this is the swan song and they're going to play some Johnny Cash song at the end <laughs> or, or a Ludwig Gorenson version of that. And uh, Boba Fett's going to. And it this feels like it, you spoiled it for some people and not for me because I think I think probably for most people too because I would have never said he was going to die. To be fair, I'm just giving John a hard time. Exactly. About spoiling, well, but as I've always yeah I've always thought that was interesting when people are like, uh, like oh, do you think they'll kill off Ray in Force Awakens? It's like no, that was never even right. A, you know, it's it I just mean, doesn't they technically even did, but yeah. Well, the difference well, here is we don't know that there's more after <laughs> yeah. this, whereas with episode seven, you're like, well, there's going to be an eight and nine. We knew that. Right, so. right, right, right. It's pretty obvious. But yeah, I didn't even pick up on that. Uh, that's a very interesting comment. I didn't. Yeah. yeah. I hope but they I, do make more. I'll take more. I haven't even I, seen the show yet. I'm saying I assume that I assumed that they 
I don't know. I kind of thought that it, it was exactly what they're saying. Like, sure, if, if sure. it's popular, this character was going to be alive. They, I I think they want Tamara Morrison around for a long time. They want him to be old man Boba Fett. I mean, he already kind they of They love is, him. The way I'm they talk saying, about like, him. Yeah. Yeah. There's, a there's. I mean, guys, we're not even scratching the surface of this article. Mm-hmm. We could do the whole mm-hmm. podcast on this one thing because they talk about um, their exercise regime. They talk about, you know, how they're in the... Uh, uh, they're in these scenes together from different angles of their age. Like they're like, oh, they don't feel like older actors because right. they're they're um, doing these scenes and, and working working it out the way they are. Um, L- Lacey mentioned their personalities early in this. Yeah, like, how how passionate Timo- Timora Morrison is. Yeah, it, there's just yeah. There, there's so much to it. Um, we're we're barely scratching the surface. But like I said, I just I always have kind of had this impression that. Boba Fett was going to be around, uh, you know, through Mandalorian season three and mm-hmm. for uh, the the crossover event they've described. And I, I just think they're going to continue with that character. And if this show blows up, we've always talked about, will there ever be a Mandalorian movie? This is another option. They could do a couple seasons of this show and do the Boba Fett movie and it's old man Boba Fett. And that could be the big he dies or whatever. But right season one of the book of boba fett is where they kill off the character it like you're right it's technically a spoiler but like i didn't even it it wouldn't it didn't even register (laughs) well yeah i didn't know that because it was season 2.5 or whatever of the mandalorian that it was just gonna be one of those stop gap one off we're giving we're giving you boba fett and that's it we haven't Um, figured out the vibe yet of what their plans are for these shows well and then that's the other thing though about the whole you know, gangster crime family type of movie is not everyone makes it out of these things. And if he's not <laughs> just saying, bum, Cause, bum, cause, bum, cause <laughs> that's another part of, part of these articles here is Ming Na Wen said, no, Fennec Shan was dead. Like that yeah. was in the script that she was dead in the Mandalorian. I still stand by that. I knew she wasn't dead. <laughs> well, she was, she was dead. That's the thing. But, but she <laughs> talked to Filoni and uh, she made it clear she didn't convince him, but she was like, you know, is there any possibility she's not dead? And he he started tossing, they started tossing the ideas around after that. And then I knew it, I guess. The, here's the question, though. <laughs> if depending on when all these ideas came into place, I wonder if there was someone else they had in mind to join Boba Fett. Like that's that's probably stuff they may reveal down the line, but it's just something to mm-hmm. think about as a yeah. fan. But mm-hmm. it's. If she would, you know, they they do this in Star Wars where, well, we were going to kill them off and we kept them around. Usually they end up doing it. So I got to say, I don't I, know. Yeah, I love how they're not just focusing on Boba Fett, but also focusing on Fennec. They've been doing that a lot in their marketing. Well, there's that, that, that TV together. spot. Yeah. Where yeah. she got her dialogue where she's kind of like in, in, in difficult times, uh, fear is a given or whatever. Yeah, so. so that's that's yeah. a good time to, to flip this and let's move over to this TV spot because um, I, I was actually right on this that they are moving forward with different versions of spots and yeah yeah i don't think i said this i feel like i did but even the tv spot itself is an r word like it was return and now this one's ready yeah you did mm -hmm. say this you said it was going to be the something yeah or or, yeah or something that was very familiar in the same type of title so in this case it was the the r word yeah 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 um but uh, but this one was interesting because this whole time we've been seeing that clip over and over and over. I intend to rule with respect. J- Jabba did it with fear. I intend to rule with respect. And then now we're getting a little bit of that different angle, um, a new perspective on the show because his partner here is saying, yeah, you might want to take another look at that fear. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Fear angle. Um, I, right. I, I hear what you're saying, but hear me out. Fear can be a good thing. So if his partner for this show is kind of suggesting, um, you know, a, a different path, then the, the pitch that we've been given for a while now um, might change even in that first episode you know well and they want you to set makes... up and they want you to feel like this is what the show is going to be but right. like robert was saying in the last article there's so many surprises so many different things that happen who knows where boba fett is going and i think that that this is intentional to to kind of make us go i thought i had an idea but now i don't know and i'm really intrigued mm-hmm. yeah 
and it, it goes with like Lacey was saying like Boba Fett is calculated he's a bounty hunter he 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 plans everything out all his moves military about background, how, yeah. Yeah, military background yeah how he's gonna do what he's gotta do right military background where Fennec Shand is more street savvy assassin kind of paved her own <laughs> it just way makes me think she's doing dances in the streets she's from the streets <laughs> She's from the street. Step yeah. up. That's what I but, thought when I read that quote. I was like, so she's yeah. from Step Up. <laughs> right. She, right. The, the first the first five minutes of the show is her doing uh one jump ahead of the bread line. <laughs> yeah. Oh, very geez. Aladdin. Yeah, this trailer is yeah. very Aladdin. And then Ezra comes in for some reason. But <laughs> yeah. um uh but the, the the element of fear, that's an emotion. And Boba Fett doesn't get that in terms of how to uh handle their business she does because that you know you're not you're more emotion based if you're someone who's um doing things on your own to survive you know you you're you're more grounded to the streets and that sort of thing and he's more of a calculated person emotion's not usually a factor in what he's doing so he's like yeah i don't i don't get that and she's like no you need to like you like you said james like no you need to get that you know, so I, I see it as kind of like Boba Fett has somewhat died in the Sarlacc pit and come back and he's grateful for this chance to come back. And now he's going to do things the way he wants to do them. And I see it as she died and she's coming back and she's got the attitude of I have nothing to lose. So it's two very different perspectives mm. of like she like in the teaser, she's throwing knives. You know, she's very kind of more on the aggressive end of things, whereas he's more, like you said, John, calculated and like, okay, well, I'm going to rule with respect. I'm going to talk this through. Like, let's have the conversation. And she's just like, no, let's not. So that's Which, kind of like yeah. how I'm viewing them is like they've both somewhat died, but they're handling their second chance differently. Which is funny because taking into consideration that now we know all these clips are in the first, like, say, argument sake, 20 minutes of this whole yeah, series. Right. He's Imagine going, it's the first five minutes is just a montage that they cut from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's going, <laughs> I intend to rule with respect. And she's saying, like, talking about feeding to menageries. And mm -hmm. he's smashing skulls in the street. Like, it's going to turn pretty quick. And it's going to take off, like, one of those, like, the Aerosmith roller coaster. Like, just, like, boom. I'm expecting nonstop craziness. Like, every episode we're going to leave being like, what just happened? And big reveals, he said. He said yeah, every... Yeah, big surprises, yeah. Every episode has a big surprise so we're not we're probably not gonna have those conversations like oh that episode was a filler uh like it's can people be... please not do the uh spoilers no context i hate those tweets stop doing them they give stuff away <laughs> yeah i'm saying um, it now yeah, yeah uh this did did make me think when when he gave that quote that said there's surprises in every episode and even mm -hmm. the f for the second half of the first episode is a big spoiler I was like, oh, is that John's article? <laughs> is that the whole thing? Oh, I'm not gonna... yeah, maybe. I was like, maybe that's how they kick off this show with a big bang. That would make sense. Like, what? If you compare it to Mando chapter nine, the first one of the second yeah, season yeah, yeah. in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, that mm -hmm. uh, and her talking about certain things in, in some of her lines um, in some of the TV spots. Um, yeah. And so, so someone told me something today and I definitely you know, trust this person. And I'm not going to say exactly what it is, but what they told me, if like, I was like, there's no way, but if that happens, Oh man, mm, people are going to be, <laughs> well, like, thanks a lot, John. <laughs> I got you something for Christmas. It's really good. You're yeah. going to love it, but I can't tell you what. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, I, yeah, I know. But so it's... here's, here's one thing that kind of intrigues me about this uh, new TV spot is that, I have been kind of under the impression that Boba Fett is okay. Eh, these are probably bad examples. I was going to say it. it not, Here like, comes a Baney example. I can't uh, wait. Where are we going? We I don't know where I'm sandwiches. going with it. I'm trying to compare them and I'm trying to say like, okay, I don't think there's so much like king and queen. I was thinking it was like ruler and, and like I, I, I Someone who's like it's henchmen. His it's always the henchmen. henchmen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Someone who doesn't have that that level. But I'm starting to think now where she says, "Hey, boss, you might want to reconsider that fear thing." If he's like listening to her and taking advice from her, like I know she's been an assassin for a very long time, so he probably respects her to a certain degree. But how equal are these two? You know what I mean. 
I, mm. I, there's something interesting about it reminds I me think, of Lord of the Rings with the guy, the king that's like frozen in time and his evil like witch henchman that's like whispering in his ear. Oh, yeah. Someone oh, somewhere yeah. is yelling the characters names out. Worm <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. The, yeah. I, Gimli, I don't know his Gimli, name. I think. Yeah. What? Gimli's no. the Gimli's the Gimli? Dwarf. No. <laughs> yeah. Wrong. <laughs> um yeah, did worm, I get a character worm, name right? Worm tongue is kind of what he's nicknamed, but I I don't. Yeah, the guy with the black it. hair, he's like very mm-hmm. snapey looking. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, I think but, Gimli's um, a better name. But anyway, my my thing is, like, I have kind of coming off of Mandalorian season two, I kind of approached this like he was. Um, I mean, there's no other better way, way to say it. I I don't want to say the word slave. It's not right, but it's like she's she, indebted to him. She's it's indebted Han Solo and to Chewbacca. him. And no matter what he says, she's going to do because like he he's master or something. I, that's a weird way to phrase it. And I'm not, trying I mean, to it literally it is Han and Chewbacca, but if it you think feel, about it, yeah, but that's the thing is like Han and Chewbacca have worked into this relationship now where I still kind of feel like Han is sort of the leader and maybe that's because he speaks English, but, right. um, but I feel like he takes advice from Chewbacca Often, oh right 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 kind of thing and there's there's a mutual respect where okay technically life debt whatever but we're buddies and we're equals because me, it's friends, me and yeah. you uh versus everybody else but i have gotten a vibe from this that it's boba fett and his like underling mm. and he's ruling you know he's yes. sitting on no, the that's throne a, and she's no, on that's, the side that's, no question yeah no question i'm yeah, saying yeah. this trailer throws makes me think that that's possibly not the dynamic it seems and like so she has more power her here. as an equal yeah. well and, and a little bit you, more like i'll listen to what you have to say i i i want to hear you give me some mm-hmm. advice hmm that's a good point maybe i'll do that well you know, that's gangster stuff seem man as... that, that everyone has a lieutenant or a consigliere like you know tom hagan in the godfather is like the voice of don corleone and he's always like you yeah, know yeah. uh don, don I, I i i don't know if we should uh, do this like maybe you know send a message this way and he's like yeah all right you know so i think it's more of that sort of thing and apparently like they are leaning heavily on the godfather and one other movie i forget what they brought up but uh um, king conan yeah right right john right. you should so, know you cover this on your podcast this is like uh the sultan and jafar like he's got yes. his advice. I was yeah. going to say that actually, Clearly but I didn't want to bring him. up Aladdin again. I didn't want people to be like, Lacey, get off of it. That was yeah. literally the first thing that came to my. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I, yeah. I think just the thing was, is I think for the first time we're hearing her speak and it seems like she was giving advice and I was right. like, oh, this is interesting. It feels a little bit more of a dynamic of these two are equal um, than what I've kind of felt like I've been sold where it's like he's at the top and she works for him. And you know, shut your mouth. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I think that's like, clear. Uh, yeah. You do what I tell you to do, kind of thing. But right. I don't know. Maybe they're doing a little bit more equal thing. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, anything else on the uh, trailer? That sp- particular TV spot? I no, feel I like think we, we're good. We've talked. I feel through like we covered Boba all Fett the Boba stuff, Fett yeah. stuff. Yeah. Oh, all right. Um, there is that uh, that other article though from TV. I pulled Insider. from that too, though. I did too. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. yeah. I got all my uh, Boba Fett stuff mixed. <laughs> Big. Yeah. Big, I thought I think... we were I thought we were doing mixing the mixing the bowl. Doing all... <laughs> oh, I guess I guess that's true. This is some where the military training stuff came in. Yeah. I I was looking at more of like the the iconic suit and everything that he was. He was oh talking yeah, Filoni's quotes. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, um, yeah. Let's uh let's move on from Book of Boba Fett because there's tons of content coming up for that particular show. Uh, you know, right around the corner. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about uh, Star Wars Andor, uh, and Stellan Skarsgård, or yeah, Skarsgård, uh, was doing an interview, and it was uh for Screen Rant, and he, uh, not that he hasn't praised the writing before, but he went out of his way to say, you know, the the writing's really good. It's the same writer that did Rogue One, and also uh, to work with Diego Luna, who's an old friend. I was so excited by that. And then my character, well, you'll see. <laughs> it's fun to play because he has a lot of different faces to show. So getting some cool quotes from him, um, but I think the, the takeaway from this is that uh, this guy's pretty notable. He's been in a lot of really 
great stuff over the years. Mm -hmm. So for him to come out and say, I love the writing. I love the characters. I love being able to work with the main actor again, who's far younger than he is. You know what I mean? So, so for him to say like, you know, he's not talking about working with, you know, someone, uh, his age or a very specific director. He's talking about a young actor who he's worked with in the past and says he's phenomenal. I, I was jumping to come back and work with him again. He's an old friend. You know, it's just everything about Stellan and his praises in of this particular show get me so excited. Uh, it makes me really feel like they're on to something. They're, they're, they sneaky have a really solid show um, that is coming. John, did you have uh, any thoughts on his uh, phrases here or what he had to say? Um, yeah, he's an interesting character in terms of um not not his actual character in the show but him as a person because yeah. he blends that that you know actor feel uh that prestige element of being an actor and but also he's been on a lot of franchise stuff you know pirates of the caribbean as bootstrap bill marvel uh dune he was in Mar marvel with avengers dune so he's not above in terms of art uh b doing these big franchise types of things um i i know him best from back in the day for goodwill hunting playing the counterpoint to yeah. Robin Williams playing Jerry, the award-winning, pretentious, snobby, scarf-wearing uh, <laughs> uh, Harvard lecturer. But so he's a really good actor. He's seventy now, so um, it'll be interesting to see what type of if he's playing one of those like I'm an old agent and I'll teach you some tricks, or if he's playing a bad guy. He he did a good job of he keeping. He always us... plays a bad guy. Phil, I feel like he's got that look. Yeah, you think he's a bad yeah. guy? I know I say that, and I know you love Chernobyl, and I know he's not really a bad guy in that, right? Right, and in in um yeah, in, I'd say he's uh, he's the good guy. In Pirates, he's not either. He plays uh, Will Turner's dad, his, his deceased dad, or whatever. But sure. yeah, who's joined um, a group of bad guys though? Yeah, well, pirates. They're all <laughs> he's all over guys. the. Well, no, I mean specifically the like the protagonist, the bad, pirates. the the bad or no pirates. antagonist pirates. Right, he plays yeah. Bootstraps Bill. Yeah, bootstrap built. Oh yeah, my turns. god, I didn't yeah. even make that connection. Now I did. Didn't before. Yeah. You see it now. Well, <laughs> so but but at the same time, he 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 does sprinkle in that whole thing about how yeah, Rogue One just felt like it was more mature, and you know he didn't say mature. You know he said mature because oh. that's what they say when they say those things. Mm -hmm. Um, so. I, I he, but he seems like he's he's enjoying having fun. I like the fact that Andor, even though we could speculate the most about this series because it's a prequel to a really well fleshed out movie where we have character end games in it for like uh cassian it being the main one mm -hmm. we don't know a lot about this show and and they've been very good at sort of keeping us guessing and i feel like every time we get a quote or hear something about andor i'm like i have 12 more questions i came into reading this article with three and now i have 12 questions so how he explained his character i'm like it's like the ink blot thing where I'm like, or the duck or a uh, uh, frog or rabbit or a duck picture. I'm like, I turn it one way. I'm like, oh, he's a good guy. I turn it the other way. I'm like, oh, he's a bad guy. Like, mm -hmm. it's it's very interesting to, you know, this show's flying under the radar. Nobody's talking about Andor. How many yeah. times do I see tweets where people are like, what are you most excited about for 2022? And people are not putting Andor on it. It's, I it's am. James wild. Is. James I'm is. the only one. From day one. James yeah. is from day one. Hey, you I know, feel like it's, we all it's, we've seen are. more from Andor than we've seen for Obi Wan, and I feel yeah. like if you ask the normal fan what what it, what do you think is going to happen in Obi Wan, everybody has this like kind of general idea of the way that the show is going to go. You know, he's, oh, Inquisitors, and he's off planet, and he's going to fight Darth Vader and all this other stuff. It's like, and some of that comes from stuff they've said and artwork and whatnot. But we've right. gotten stuff for Andor, we've gotten artwork, we've got we've seen the set. Even in not yeah. in uh, leaks, we've seen it in an actual promotion thing where they're like, hey, "This is you know what we're working on over here," and yeah. it, it's it's crazy how much they've actually done for Andor, and it still feels like we're sitting here going, "Oh yeah." Well, yeah, and mm -hmm. and the the other thing about that is like Rogue One. If 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 movies had their own like PR reps, Rogue One has like Mel Gibson or Charlie Sheen's because. It it went through just as much chaos and disaster as a lot of the other Star Wars movies did, but people like ignore it and they're like Rogue One is oh yeah yeah is prestige Star Wars and it's like 
Tony Gilroy came in, added the whole third act pretty much, rewrote stuff. Gareth, F- Gareth Edwards played ball, so he didn't get fired. Uh, and now he that was the smartest decision he could have made because it's Gareth Edwards directed Rogue One. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's him so sa- weird, man. Him saying Rogue One was, Tony Gilroy, was a travesty. Said, People liked yeah. the movie, so they right. forgive it. Then yeah. A Last Jedi was not a travesty, very smooth. But people didn't like the movie, so the they, smoothest, they, yeah, yeah. They they say it was uh, it was terrible, and then you have and, something like Rogue One or uh, sorry Solo that doesn't even fit in there. Like it had the travesty, and then people like yeah. are still like kind of well, yeah. that's a result of it being but like he, I don't know, it's crazy. He 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 like just casually mentions Tony Gilroy as the guy who wrote Rogue One, <laughs> and <laughs> like the. Like the other two writers, Gary Whitta and Chris Weitz, I think it was. Uh, he just like glossed right over them. He's just like, yeah, yeah he wrote Rogue Tony, One. Tony. Yeah. So, and it's just like people are just like, whatever. Rogue One had problems. I blah, no, it didn't. Blah blah. So it's so funny. Yeah, people how it forget just, like, that. Like all the teasers and trailers and stuff we got that had clips that we never even saw. And yeah. people are Hal like, Hickle. Eh. Hal, Hal Hickle today posted a or today. Well, when we recorded this, he posted. Uh, an image of him holding the plans on the beach. Yeah, because they run with the plans on the beach yes! in the trailer. Yeah. yeah. So I want Hal. I want to find out where you have those hanging in your house. Is it above the toilet? Where Is did it you in the steal kitchen? Those plans. Hal. Yeah, you have those somewhere. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> it, it, you know, not much here, but obviously based on things he says, uh, I kind I ran on a little bit of tangents there, but it 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 stirs up some some sparks about you know thoughts on what this could be and uh, right. very cool. Lacey and you're gonna get a good performance out of this guy because he's 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 a veteran seasoned very good actor Mm -hmm. i think john said it really well i know i was constantly chiming in there because i agreed with everything he was saying i i 100 percent like reading this quote when he said that you know it's fun to play this character because he has a lot of different faces to show that to me says betrayal he's going to betray someone (laughs) he's Mm. going to you know turn or something like that that's what i see um, but it might be something even more obvious than that. But to to me, I, I kind that. of get the vi- I, oh, call me crazy. I get sure. the vibe that Cassian learns to be the way that he is, where he will kill a friendly person because Skarsgård, in this particular case, is his like mentor jaded. father. He's his Beckett. You're saying. Yeah, oh. I, I have a feeling that he's mm. like, I play a lot of faces, so sometimes he's friendly and he's happy and he comes in and he's talking and schmoozing and other times he's like this cold-hearted right. murderer because that's what the rebellion does, that's what you that's need to be. That's what he needs to do, yeah. Kind of thing. So, I, I mean, maybe, maybe not, I, I don't know, but when I got the vibe that he says my player to character plays a lot of, uh, or he, I forget what the phrasing was exactly, but y- you know what it was. Um, mm-hmm. that a lot of I different was like, faces to play. Uh, I thought that reminds me of Andor in Rogue One, a person who would kill someone right. who's giving him information because right. that's what the rebellion does, you know? Yeah. And yeah. then I thought about the age and I was like, okay, well, it seems like he might be like a mentor or someone he's looking up to or someone who's teaching or him to be what he has to be. Or maybe he's the one that killed Cassian's parents. Yeah, who knows? I mean, there, there's there's so yeah. much there um, that they could play with. But... Uh, Man, I'm yeah, I'm he, so proud for Andor. Go ahead. You know what's interesting about this? It has nothing to do with this article, but I just looked it up because I'm just a very curious person. I need to know information. Curious boy. Curious, curious John. In <laughs> according to the stellar people at Wikipedia, Cassian Andor is 26 when he dies. Only and the good this, die young. Am I right? And accord, according to them, Andor takes place. Starts takes taking place five years before that. So Cassian's supposed to be twenty one, played by Diego Luna, who's like thirty seven. Was Jin twenty one in Rogue One? Yes. That's why he's probably twenty one. They probably did that well, on purpose. Well, well, she he was twenty six, she was twenty one. I'm saying so she then, was twenty one in Rogue One, so they're taking him back to the point that we meet him at twenty one. It's yeah. the same way oh, as yeah. like you know when yeah, like Anakin cool. is nineteen. You know, it's Ray's like, well, 19. they did that because, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Luke's nineteen. But yeah, that's that's a that's a little bit of a stretch. I know Diego Luna's a young young looking guy. I'm not saying he's not, but I believe he's like thirty seven. Um, 
He's got a baby face, though, because Havana Nights, he looked real he's, young. F- he's 42. How old was he when Havana Nights? Because he played a teenager in Havana Nights. Dirty Dancing. Uh, he was probably in his late 20s. Something. I don't know. It wasn't that long ago, I don't think. Maybe I'm... Probably was. Uh, but, but no, you know what's funny? His birthday's on the day Book of Boba Fett comes out. A little fun fact for everybody. The 29th? Uh, happy birthday, Diego Aww. Luna, the 29th. Um, but, so he's a 41-year-old playing a 21-year-old. Good so, for him. So for people who are like, Alden Ehrenreich's going to be too old to play young Han Solo, pff, mm. get out of here. I now need to look I, up how old he was. I always forget he was in a Katy Perry music video. Oh, yeah. He played the love interest, yeah? Yeah. Havana Nights is 2004, so he was 25. He looks baby, baby in that movie. Um, That's all I got, James. I know we're probably running up a little long here. but <laughs> Let's um, continue to talk about how old <laughs> Diego Luna is. <laughs> it's not that he's old. It's that he's playing such a young character. No, I'm just yes, joking because we right, spent yeah, a lot yeah. of time on his age. Anyway, a um, couple other things we wanted to mention in the world of Star Wars news. Uh, you know, we are we were talking about uh, Book of Boba Fett and then Andor, but Obi Wan Kenobi is also right around the corner. And O'Shea Jackson Jr. offered high praise for the mystery role. We don't know much about what he's doing on, but some of his quotes for this. Uh, side note: I just. This this is what I like to see, you know, people coming into Star Wars uh, quote here. This is the best job I've ever had in my life. I can't get into too many details. I have to wait for the green light, you know, but, you know, he's just I, he says, I'm such a nerd. It was such an honor to work for Star Wars. If anybody who really knows me knows I'm a nerd to the core, you know, it's just uh, this is he the, had the he best says again, tweet he on Disney down. Plus. That day. was the best job I ever had in my life. I just want to go back. I hope there's reshoots. Like I love yeah, everything yeah, yeah. about what he's saying. It's so he cool. He had the best that tweet on awesome. Disney Plus Day when he was just like, "Yo, where's the trailer?" Like I was expecting <laughs> a trailer. Which the funny thing is that means he reads probably Star Wars Newsnet. It's possible on the pod, buddy. It's Let's possible. talk. Um, the other thing Come we want on, to mention, too, uh, is if you've seen the movie Return of the Jedi and you thought it was pretty decent or pretty good, you are not the only one because it got officially uh, put into the National Film Registry. Uh, there was a bunch of movies that were released uh, and Return of the Jedi was the w- made the cut. I also saw in there was like um, Nightmare on Elm Street uh, and yeah. uh, uh, Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Rings was in there as well yeah. so i looked up how long ones. they took shooting that by the way really random fun fact 438 days they shot what? lord of the rings this oh, trilogy. Three. or yeah. no, the no, trilogy. trilogy yeah mm. yeah 438 in a row days. i saw something with elijah recently i think it was on hot ones and he was talking about how all of it was just like like yeah. it was like this time of his life was nothing but Lord of the Rings. And 438 it's like, days. I was like, because yeah. I was just curious because I was thinking mm-hmm. about recently we were talking about, you know, Star Wars movies and what the future of Star Wars is. And I was like, you know, what if they did do something like that where they shot a trilogy back to back to back all at once? Because we've kind of harped on that. Yeah. Yeah. Over a year. That is insane. Nonstop. It, 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 his comments, too, reminded me of um, Anthony Daniels and... uh uh, talking about how he had to be in the suit and then other subsequent people don't have to be in the suit because they just CG him. They CG the suit right. like, on him or yeah. replace him and stuff. Cause Elijah was like, we filmed, we had to wear the, the outfits and the feet and everything. And it was freezing and it was, they cold. made like 1800 then, pairs of Hobbit feet or something like that. And then they did like the Hobbit movies. And it's like, <laughs> it's like they just did the, they just digitally did everything and yeah. like it wasn't anywhere near as bad what about Crazy. the hobbit feet <laughs> um all right well that's it for star wars uh i will we'll have to wake john up he fell asleep oh come but, on that kind yeah, of stuff is cool regardless of what movie it is <sighs> john john's like let's talk about sports <laughs> or, or- <laughs> Or Star Wars nerd stuff. Let's talk about sports. <laughs> yeah. Look at Lord of the Rings. Right. The uh, voice you just did for that. <laughs> what was that? Uh, I don't know, but it's going to take us into the Patreon pod race. So, Lacey, what's it's up? It's that new mic. That's what he sounds <laughs> yeah, like. It must that be. new mic. <laughs> hey, guys. That's it. That's All the right. new mic. He sounds like the narwhal on Elf. <laughs> Bye, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I like sports. Uh, all right, <laughs> everybody, it's time for the Patreon pod race. Mm-hmm. 
So there are lots of ways you can support us. You can like this video, comment, subscribe on YouTube, follow us on our, the, all the audio apps on Twitter at RBATSWNN, on Instagram at The Resistance Broadcast. Uh, we've got a ton of stuff coming, including the Mando Fan Show for the Book of Boba Fett, which will be a uh, weekly live shows, which we're really excited about. So definitely uh, check that stuff out and make sure to follow us on all the channels so that you don't miss anything. Uh, if you want more than that, including exclusive weekly videos, polls, and much more, you can head over to patreon.com slash resistance broadcast. We care a lot about this page. We put a lot of work into it. We put a lot of extra content and time uh, because you guys support us. And that's starting at $2 a month. Uh, you support what we're doing here with the show and beyond and what we plan to do in the next year, which is right now currently going to be the biggest year for Star Wars yet. We're gearing mm -hmm. up for, like we said, Mando Fan Show, other stuff. We've got tons of plans, including Celebration, which is only we're now into months away, we can say. Not years. We're months, you know, what, five, five months away? Five months. Oh, my gosh. It's going to it's going to fly by. So, yeah. Uh, this is the part of the show where we let generals and spice runners be a part of the show. We ask them a question, they get to give us an answer, and we talk about it. But before we do that, I want to say thank you to our generals and spice runners. So first up, we have our generals. So thank you, Carmelo, Andrew Staley, Jeremy Myers, John Reese, Jetta Rosewater, Paul Olson, Jake Houchins, Oliver Lewis, Frank Grande, Joe Ritchie, Darth Hurricane, John Charlton, Nick Kratz, Christian Morales, Brian Smith, Matt Chitty, Nathan Shank, and Val Trichkoff. Thank you guys mm -hmm. so much as generals. Thank you. Then we have our spicier crew, our Spice Runners. Thank you, David Probus, Neil Shaw, Double C Chris, Kendall Gelnar, Ryan Wara, Dave Hornack, Micah Harrison, and Thomas Hennessy. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we will be having a Spice Run chat soon, so stay tuned for that. Um, Who's up, Dave? You guys have supported us so much this year, um, and I know we're going to have another episode, obviously, before the end of the year, but I'm already yeah. thanking you now. So thank you so much. Uh, and this week we have one of our Spice Runners, Ken Spice Runners, Kendall Gelnar. Thank you so much, Kendall. Uh, we and I know it was a quick turnaround, so thank you for that, by the way. Uh, and we asked him, Yoda has many memorable and iconic scenes throughout the Star Wars saga. What is your favorite and why? This is a great question. Really good question. So Kendall, take it away. Hello, all. My question was. Yoda has had memory, many memorable scenes throughout the Star Wars saga. Which was your favorite and why? And I think I just, I really still have to go with the classic scene of Yoda just uh, disgruntled at Luke's progress and going off and actually raising Luke's X-Wing out of the swamp. I mean, I mean, that just really sticks with me. And it's just really such a strong lesson about what Yoda is trying to teach him that every limitation is in his own mind and he can overcome them if he just lets go of his fears of his own abilities and inhibitions. So I've just always loved that a lot. And so for me, that is the most classic Yoda scene I can think of, even though there are so many other strong contenders. Thanks. Excellent job, Kendall. Perfect, perfect answer, I think. But John, what do you think? It's it's a legacy scene, like not even in just in Star Wars. Like you could see a montage of, you know, at the Oscars of history of cinema, and you'll probably see Yoda moving Luke's uh, X-wing with John Williams swelling Yoda theme music. It's just, it's a it's a it's a scene that's not necessarily emotional, but at the same time, the music punches you right in the mm -hmm. stomach a little bit and like makes you like, ooh, um, mm -hmm. very powerful. Um, and also a very big lesson for Luke, as as Kendall put, uh, sort of, you know, you need to let go of your um, fears and also your limitations, thinking you can't do things. So I think it's a very important lesson that a lot of people can learn from kids to adults. And I think you nailed it. I think that was a great, great answer. I was expecting an uh, original trilogy one from you. So you kind of uh, hit hit the big one there. So uh, great job um and love all your i'm always like your background is always kind of like a where's waldo thing to me i'm like is that yeah the one, the one thing that caught my my eye that my friend used to always have um was the the phantom menace bank duel because every <laughs> once in a while it was motion activated so every once in a while we would walk by it and it would be like so you probably have the same experience kendall when you have to you know get up to get a glass of water or something i'm sure if you have it on but anyway great job thanks for all your support you're the man Every time I see his background, I think about the Grogu that he won because it's so epic that like yeah. you, sometimes you pick prizes and you're like, oh, this Did would you be see cool. It? It's in there. Yeah. 
and then yeah. you see it and then every time we have a video chat with kendall i see it and i'm like man that was a really good gift or yeah. prize so awesome answer i'm actually gonna go to james because i know james has brought this up as one of his favorite moments in star wars so yeah so it's, it, it is actually funny because when he started giving the answer if you go back and listen to him he says the classic scene of, of yoda disgruntled at luke's lack of progress i was like oh last jedi right I was like, oh, the, I, I know what scene he's going to describe. And then he says it, he, he keeps going. And I was like, oh, you're right. Uh, weird. That kind of <laughs> applies to both things, which, is, again, is why I like The Last Jedi scene so much. Is it's very right, right. you know familiar. It makes Luke the same Luke that he's always been. Um, but the uh, interesting thing about this scene, um, uh, to me personally, is the last line where, where Luke says, I don't believe it. And he says, that's why you fail. Um, that means a lot to me personally, just as I think about, you know, what is the universe and what do we believe we are? Like, are we a simulation and stuff? I think about that stuff all the time and what it means to have faith and, and confidence that when you believe something, it, it exists for that reason, because you believe it, you know, kind of thing. Um, there's a lot to it. Um, but I do want to also mention, John said really quick about the music, this song is what the kids are calling these days a banger. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a song that it slaps. I think. So you're saying yeah, it slaps? It, yeah, it does slap. In fact, uh, no, <laughs> it uh, it's a song that I don't think anybody. Uh, well, some people, but you know, I don't think most people recognize it like as a Star Wars song. When you say, "Hey, sing some Star Wars songs," they probably wouldn't go to this one. But play this song for somebody, and they're like. Star Wars like it just it yeah. brings all these emotional feelings of like why don't I think of this song this is this is Star Wars like is this the main what am I listening to is this the main theme is this part of the main theme and it's mm -hmm. like no it's not it's just one of the songs in the original trilogy and it just it it's incorporated so well in this pivotal moment that it just you know br brings everything out it, it John Williams pretty good you know, looking back. That kid's all right. <laughs> I agree. It is yeah, a total is bop, good. James. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know all the terms. I got uh, that I'm on track TikTok. on repeat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kendall, great answer. I agree. This is such a wonderful emotional scene that I think a lot of us can learn from time and time again. Um, I think it's one of those things that when it comes back on, you're like, you know what? That's a, that's a great point. I should definitely yeah. do that. Um, but yeah, thank you for your support. We love having you in the community, and we hope you have a wonderful holiday, by the way. Um, and now we're going to head to John. All right. Yeah, sometimes we do like an open chat at the end of the show, but we did run a little long uh, just having a blast dissecting all that stuff and, and giving some takes that hopefully you enjoyed about all the upcoming stuff, including the one right around the corner of the Book of Boba Fett. And you're going to get our live takes on those episodes on December 29th for the Mando Fan Show Season 3. Um, hope you're digging the logo too. Uh, we'll probably toss it up on the site for if we haven't already for shirts and stuff like that. Right, James? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, probably. So the only thing I'll say is this, we have our, uh, Christmas episode, holiday episode coming up this Thursday on Christmas Eve, Eve. Uh, so we will have a normal episode just in case you were wondering. Uh, but just real quick before we get out of here, guys, are you done Christmas shopping? Or are you last minute uh, going to the store type of people? I was done, no joke, a month ago. I I, I am not surprised about that yeah. at all. Well, I I'm think a planner, you also but knew I'm also stuff was coming up and baby. I have yeah. one gift left to get, but I've already gotten that person something, so I feel like it's not that bad because it's like, oh well, I've already. I'm just yeah. an overachiever. In what were we gonna do, Secret Santa this year? Did we screw no. Them? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm um. I'm an, in a kind of an unfortunate position because what I was going to do uh, for my wife, what I had planned on buying, I kind of was like, okay, I'll go get it. And I was looking into it and I'm like, I don't, I don't think this works. Like, I kind of don't want to do this. Do you and guys so panic about like, getting gifts for your wife? Well, yeah, nah. a little bit. Cause yeah. I am such a good gift giver. Like, I don't want to brag, but like, I really am picking cards and gifts for people. I'm very good. Cards are easy. Just go in and grab one. No, yeah. I take time. I read through cards. I pick the perfect card and the perfect gift. If there's one thing I can do in this life, it's that. 
Hey, I okay. I have a secret life hack that I've never done, but <laughs> it's a good life hack if you're the type of person that would do this. Ready? Go to the store, pick out two cards, and then write the message from one card handwritten in the card you're actually going to give the person. Oh, like you're so you're you're plagiarizing is what you're doing. Well, like, yeah, I mean, some you're, guys listening you're totally to our podcast stealing. at Hallmark, and he's just like, "What the hell?" Do you know you're how much time stealing. Joseph Gordon-Levitt put into writing those things? <laughs> exactly, exactly. You're stealing uh, a professional's uh, a professional card writer's script. Yeah, thoughts. But <laughs> it's not like anybody knows that, or or mm. it's not like you're well now uh, they know. you would ever be caught or something. Mm. But it's just like one of those things. Like you could take it and you could be like, oh, I like what they said here, and then you could you could maybe even just get a general idea and and kind of make your make your own words. But it's a good template to base off of because somebody there's a professional the that point. does card write and knows exactly what to say. And the whole point of the card is they write it for you. You just write dear blank and let, let them I read always the write thing. an essay. No, but oh my God, that's what I'm, I'm saying. It's like card writer. you could give the card that has the message and then you could sign it, but or you could give a blank card that has a personalized oh, message. Oh, a blank card. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And you take right. the message from another card that's like... <laughs> that's so bad, James. That's so bad. <laughs> you look at the other it's card like, and it's Bennett, like... dear Bennett, you're a great son and you're one of the best sons Feliz that Navidad. a father could have. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. It's so you see a card that says Felice Navi Dad or something like that. Ah. Uh, you know what I'm uh, saying? And so then you get a blank card and you're like, hey, Felice Navi Dad, love you, love you, pops, or something like that. And they're yeah. like, Felice Navi Dad. You come up with that? That's clever. And James and is so like, witty. He should work for a card company. And you're like, and there you go. Exactly. <laughs> it's, <laughs> I've, I swear, no, you're not going to believe me. I've never done it. But oh my I'm god! I'm so this telling whole you, bit, he's never even done it. He's no, just come no, up with the no. Concept. I'm saying, I've never done it, but it's a good life hack. It's like saying, uh, like no, I've no. never stolen something, but if you're going to steal something, you, I, I came up with a good way to do it. <laughs> oh my god. Like, right. You would not, well, you, you wouldn't get caught if you did that that way. Uh, you know. Uh, we well, on that note, we uh, <laughs> thank you to everybody for. I'll read it off a card. Listening, watching, <laughs> being a part of TRB. No, uh, we appreciate everyone uh, joining us. If you're new to the podcast, uh, hopefully you dug that. Spread the word. Tell your fe fe fellow, feather. Tell your fellow Star Wars <laughs> fans about us. Uh, but subscribe to the show. Like Lacey said before, pick your preferred uh, uh, podcast app. But just remember, the Mando Fan Show. It is live on YouTube. Uh, but then that will it will also hit all the podcast feeds the next day. But we hope you join us live. That'd be fun. Uh, make sure you do subscribe to. Well, not subscribe. Just go to StarWarsNewsNet.com every day for all of your Star Wars news, reviews, editorials, information, and more. Store.ResistanceBroadcast.com. If you want some swag, like I just said, we're putting the new Mando Fancho Season 3 design up. Uh, makes a little too happen. We got our pins still up there for you. A lot of other stuff, including our new shirt, No Moon, which has all three super weapons on it. Uh, clever and cute design well it's not that cute it's a super weapon i was I gonna say but you're anyway. saying cute this is interesting yeah. <laughs> this is an right. interesting turn of events but uh anyway um thank you again to everybody uh, you can find me on twitter at johnny hoey writing and editing at star wars news net and my movie podcast just like the movies uh we had recently put out our episode on spider-man the 2002 one so uh no worries about spoilers there if you haven't seen the new i'm really yet. offended i wasn't a part of that episode really offended <laughs> yikes Tony um, McGuire is my ultimate crush in that movie he was good very good um james what about you uh you can find me on twitter and instagram at myra trunks and also apparently writing and editing in the walgreens line <laughs> <laughs> james why are you always bringing a pen into the pharmacy what's going on man mm -hmm. um you probably take a picture of it and then go home and do it. Knowing you. Maybe. But I've never done it. Lacey. Uh really random, really quick. Spider Man, one of my favorite parts of that Spider Man movie is when uh Green Goblin's like, Now choose. 
<laughs> he like drops both oh, of the, yeah. the cable yeah. car and Mary Jane. And so when he talks about choice in the new Spider-Man trailer and was like, oh, you must choose. I was like, oh, my God, there it is. And me and my best friend are obsessed with that line. So I sent it to him. And he oh. was just, we we laughed. Cool. We had a good laugh. You didn't send it to me. Uh, no, nope, I sent it to Anthony Santos. <laughs> Fun fact of the right. day. Yeah. Uh, anyway, people can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Lacey Gillerin. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your kind messages and support this past week. Not going to get into it, but you're all awesome. So thank you so much for that. And also, because it is still not officially Christmas yet, uh, it is the holiday season. If you're looking for end of year gifts for your boss or whoever, uh, your friend, your neighbor, etc., uh, we do have a coffee weirdbrothers.com yes uh that we created with them they are a small business just like we're a small podcast we teamed up to make this original blend of coffee called the resistance brew uh the three of us work together on it for just the design and the taste and everything like that like we put a lot of work into it so uh it was really cool to team up with this small business to to get that done and they support Absolutely. veterans and all this other really really awesome stuff that they do uh locally for the their community down in virginia so if you have a want for coffee, you can definitely pick that up at weirdbrothers.com. It makes a good stocking stuffer. People really love it. I love it because I made it, but uh, mm -hmm. other people do like it. And uh, yeah, if you didn't get what you wanted on in the holiday season or in Secret Santa, you can buy yourself some coffee and at least be go. awake for all the the upcoming Book of Boba Fett <laughs> episodes because it's 3 a.m. again. <laughs> We're yeah. back to or this if someone, again. If someone gives you an avocado and you don't want it, return it and get a bag of coffee. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. But yeah, thanks, guys. Yes, absolutely. Weird Brothers is awesome. Um, yeah, thanks, everybody. Uh, we'll be back again, like I said, for our Christmas Eve Eve episode, our holiday episode. We might look a little festive. A little teaser for you there. But <laughs> we will be talking about a very very popular character of late uh, a little that's gift all we'll to save unwrap. for now but we'll see you thursday morning right here <laughs> on the resistance broadcast see you around why kids you, why do you say it like that see you around kids